Yeah, so today, uh, as I was mentioning earlier during the polls, we, we really understand the challenges you may have uh, as a developer and a DBA. It doesn't look like that we have too many business users out there. Uh, so what we did today is we, we defined our roles uh, similar to what you might, see in your, you might see in your organization. Brian today is, of course, going to be the developer of the DBA and the report builder. Uh, he's an expert in SSIS, SSRS, as you know, and also uh, with Salesforce.com. Uh, Myself, I'm a business user here. I currently hold the role of COO here at Pragmatic Works, and I'm always asking Brian, "Hey, can we get this data? Can you show me, you know, uh, you know, something about our marketing data that relates to product, that relates to Google, and so on and so forth?" So we're constantly looking to try to get better insight into our business, and this is probably a common problem you have at your business. Yeah. So the problem I have with Tim is, as a as a business user, uh, I, I finish a report up. And inevitably, he comes back to me and says, hey, that's great, but. And we've all experienced that but moment, right? Where that's great, but, dot, dot, dot. I'd love to see it by this or by that. And inevitably, you're constantly churning. And if I ask most people here what kind of report backlog you have, the general answer I get, the rough answer I usually get, is about anywhere between, between 25 and 50 for every, every single person's report writer. So it's a, you're, you're, it's a constant churn and battle between IT priorities and what the needs of the business. And so what we want to do is we want to help Tim be able to get the answers that he needs himself without having to bother IT. In this case, it's me. Exactly. And, 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 and on top of that, I happen to be an ADD business user. I'm constantly creating new scenarios and what-if statements for Brian, which you know becomes more of a problem. So uh, hopefully this can be helpful today. So our, our agenda for today really is focused around, first of all, loading the data from Salesforce.com, whether it be Salesforce.com or Dynamics or whatever the CRM is. Really, we're using Salesforce.com to represent our challenge, but it could be any kind of da uh, Dynamics type, type data source or CRM data source. After we load that data, I'm going to show how to report against the data with reporting services and how to build dashboards against it. And then Tim's going to show, well, that's great, Brian, but he wants to do some self-service BI. So how do we do self-service BI with the Microsoft stack? So it's kind of showing you the whole complete picture from start to finish. We don't have a whole lot of slides, but I want to kind of set the stage with one of the problems that we had here at Pragmatic Works. The problem we had with Salesforce.com reporting, it was good, but <laughs> it didn't allow us to mash up the data we needed from, from other data sources. So we wanted to bring the data from our web trends type, type stats data from Google, uh, our licensing database, our QuickBooks database, our support system, and Salesforce.com, and bring all that together. Now the challenge there is, if we did all this reporting in Salesforce, every single user would acquire a license to Salesforce, which is very, very expensive in many cases. Uh, very, very expensive, actually, in our case. So we wanted to get our, we wanted to, to, to give the people that needed the, the, the reporting reporting without having to have the full-blown license of Salesforce. Yeah, and I can also add to that a little bit, Brian, before you move forward. Just that, the, you know, in, when you look at the being intuitive, uh, most of our executives, including myself, are, are used to Excel. We're used to creating pivot tables. We're used to the, using the office tools that we've been using since college. Uh, and being able to pull this data into a source, uh, a single source with SQL Server was fantastic for our, for our business users here. Yeah, actually, the, my sales guy manager can actually run circles around me in Excel. Uh, I, I thought I was good at Excel until I saw the pivot tables he was creating. So you're absolutely right. So Tim, you had a business need. What was yeah. That you wanted? Yeah. So so to demonstrate today how we came about um, using uh, Microsoft Business Intelligence here, we wanted to come up with a scenario that was similar to uh, what we use here. And one of the questions I had for Brian was, can he actually tell me what is my top performing state, uh, state being in the United States, by the quantity of opportunities that we have and the size of the opportunities that we have here. And I'd also love to know, what is the lead source for those opportunities? Where am I spending the, uh, the best marketing dollar possible? I'd like to know that data. And it was really difficult to get out of Salesforce in one single report. So Brian helped me get that done. All right. So Tim, what we can do here is the data warehouse to the rescue. The data warehouse is going to help us mash this data together, whether it be from Salesforce or QuickBooks or you know, any kind of GL system, all those kind of pieces. The data warehouse's job is to make it simple for a reporting user like Tim to do this. It's also going to help us retain that data 
So Salesforce.com is charging us per gig of space on, on, on Salesforce. So we have a quota there. So I'd like to retain data longer inside of my, my data warehouse so I can do data mining on it ultimately. I want to be able to predict, is this a good customer and is this a bad customer? And the last thing I want us to offer Tim is I want to be able to do ad hoc reporting for him. So these are the various parts of the stack that we're going to use today. We'll use integration services to load the data. We'll use reporting services to do you know, some standard, you know, I own the complete user experience kind of reports, where I as a developer own that user experience. Next, after I build that, that, in that warehouse world, I can either give Tim an analysis services to slice and dice, or I can give him more ad hoc capabilities with Power Pivot. And Power Pivot's job is to mash that data up without a warehouse. And then lastly, I'm going to show you SharePoint and how we can use SharePoint to do scorecarding and doing more interactivity with SharePoint. So the first piece to do is really loading data in Salesforce. And the way we're going to do that is with SSIS. Now, there are several ways we can do this. We could write, the problem is there's no direct connectivity in the Salesforce.com or your CRM of choice uh, that you can just easily just drag over and, and, and do that. However, so you have to use a script source of some sort in SSIS to do this. Now, what we've done is we give, this, if you go to our website now under products, you'll see a product called Task Factory. And it's a, uh, to use it inside of bids, which is where I'm showing right here, is really free, a free tool. So it's free inside of bids. It only costs you when you deploy to the server. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hop out real quick and just show you uh, the same package you saw on the screenshot here. As you can see in SIS, I'm bringing data from all the different, different uh, types of objects inside of Salesforce. And I'm ultimately loading a data, a, 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 uh, really an operational data store, uh, just a reporting database first. And then later, we're, we're, putting a, uh, we're cleansing it and putting it to a data warehouse. So my first step, for example, if we look at leads, you'll see in my lead data that I've got my Salesforce configuration. So let me go up a little bit here. Okay. And as you, you look at this, you'll see I have a Salesforce.com connection manager. Now, this Salesforce.com connection manager, it points to my Salesforce account. Now, your password, you'll use your password plus your security token, which you can obtain uh, in the setup section of Salesforce. After you do that, you'll point to the object that you want to, you want to query. You'll see a list of objects right here. And you can actually put, apply where clauses to this if you wanted to as well. This is showing all the custom fields that we have. So all that data now comes over. Now, after we do that, we have a lot of bad location data we need to fix and stuff that we want to address. To address that, we're I'm using a script source and some a script transform in some cases to parse that out. But also, we had cases where we acquired a company that was using like the full Florida and Georgia and Alabama as a state name. 